Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. And we are in the workshop here, um, taking a look at our slash two wheel drive LCG, low center of gravity. Uh, you could see this cracked rear bearing carrier here. Um, we, we ran into this uh, last time when we were running this in the park. Uh, basically, I noticed that the rear wheel was wobbling and you know, kind of going back and forth like this and whenever you notice something a little bit strange like that you want to go ahead and stop running don't do any further damage to the other parts uh, a wobble like that um, could have probably eventually destroyed the bearings and whatnot so what we're going to do is replace that rear bearing carrier i'm going to go ahead and uh <clears throat> the LCG chassis interferes with the um, turnbuckle screw that I'm loosening right now. It's a little bit trickier. Uh, on the you know on the regular slashes, it's a lot easier to access this screw. Now I was debating on whether to throw in an aluminum one. We've we've got these aluminum rear carriers on one of our other slashes. Um, we've also got the RPM ones on our, on our, um, on our slash peed. We decided to just go with a stock plastic replacement because we had three of them laying around. So when, if and when we break another one of these, we'll probably switch over to um, either an aluminum or an RPM. I'm not sure which one yet. So once you undo that top linkage, uh, you can just undo the screw here that goes through the suspension arm, the lower A arm. And then once you get this pin loose here, We are using the lower. These A-arms have two holes in them. We're using the lower one, so we'll just keep it like that on both sides. So, um, yeah, you can see here it just cracked right through the, where that pin is. Examine the pin. Still looks straight. So we're good there. I'm gonna grab a flathead screwdriver so I can pop the heck off. All right, so just, uh, why isn't this coming loose? You want to make sure that you don't drop the washer. Okay, so you can pop out the pin here, holding that axle in. Pop out the axle. Don't drop this small washer. That actually looks okay still. I don't know if this, these are Teflon coated washers, so I'm not sure if this. Oh, that's just debris. Okay. All right. So, like I said, we've got three extras of these. Let me just see which one looks the cleanest. Looks like eh, there's a little bit of gunk in there. I'm going to go with... Yeah, you want to make sure that there's no gunk on the um just the inner part so where the bearing fits in um just so that the bearing sits you know correctly so i'm going to take the old bearings pop them in all right take the whole axle pop that back in and a teflon washer this one actually seems a little bit thicker than I'm used to. Maybe the previous owner just took any old washer, not necessarily a Teflon one. Uh, I might actually 
Yeah, it seems a little bit tight. Uh, I'm actually going to dig out a proper Teflon washer. Because this one seems a little bit thicker than I remember. So let me pop this one off. All right, I'm glad I dug out a real washer because let me see if I can show you guys the difference here. The um, the washer that was on this truck, this, uh, this is on the right, is a good amount, almost twice as thick, if not more than twice as thick as the um, tough, the special Teflon washer that you're supposed to use here on the axle of the, uh, the slash here. So glad I looked that up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the top screw for this first because it interfered or rather the low center of gravity chassis interfered with our ability to put this in quickly last time so I'm gonna get a power driver Make short work of this. Just finish it off <clears throat> by hand here, but um, that Teflon washer is a tricky one. I remember being out of luck one time because didn't have any of those on hand and I had to wait to order some, but you want to make sure that you use the appropriate Teflon washer because the other washer that, that um, the previous owner had just kind of thrown in here, um, that extra thickness might actually cause some extra friction here with the between the drive pin and the uh, bearing. So that's why they use a Teflon washer in there. So I'm going to put the drive pin back through the axle and the hex snaps in here. Uh, sometimes you need to just make sure that the pins lined up with a slot and the hex. Oh. There we go. Snaps into place with a click. And then we're going to put in the uh, the drive pin here, and I'm just checking real quick because it's it's interesting. You you'll see that on the other side, it's uh, that screw in there is starting to back out, um, which they will do over time. But the trick is to um, when it's threaded in the correct direction. Um, the pin will actually tighten in as the as the suspension compresses and I'm making care to use the lower holes here in the uh, bearing carrier to match the other side and this is a pretty coarsely threaded screw <coughs> excuse me so what I like to do for these is I like to let me show this on camera here. I like to just back them out a little bit first to make sure that I'm not cross-threading that um, screw into the plastic here. All right, so the fix for this, uh, or the other side backing out here, would be to flip-flop that screw. So actually um, screw it in from the, the back versus the front so that it doesn't back out. All right, so uh, we should be good to go here. Um, the next possible modification I might make is to replace the, the, the tires here. Now these are nearly bald, um, which actually might be better for our, our uh, local track here at NorCal Hobbies. We're, we're heading into the winter here, so um, something closer to a slick surface on, on damp clay 
uh, might actually not be that bad, but I also noticed that um, we've got the front wheels mounted on the back here, um, which, uh, you know, for the slash, it's the, the arms are, are of different length. Um, we've also got front wheels on the, oh, actually, I should check what these are. What are these? Mm. Oh, we've got the rear wheels on the front here. So they're flip-flopped. So, um, which is odd because the suspension seems to line, the, you know, the wheels, the offset of the wheels seems to be equal here. Um, so maybe the previous owner used some, some compensating arms or something, which they don't seem like they are. They seem like stock arms, both front and rear. So I'm going to look into this a little bit more. It's, it's a little bit odd. So on the slash, usually the uh, rear wheels have a uh, less of an offset than the front wheels. So I'm not sure why these are flip-flop front to rear. Maybe the previous owner was trying to even out the tire wear for them um, or on them. So kind of odd. Uh, but uh, we're just going to put this back on as is for the time being because it the, the arms seem to be of equal length. I, I might do some more in-depth measurements here. Um, but regardless, thanks again for watching. Please uh, let us know what you guys think in the comments. And a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.